Hi students, um, this is Ms. Ludela, and I'm speaking to you today about, I think that there's a step of research that gets missed very often. And I talk about this in classes, but I just kind of wanted to give us an opportunity to underscore it. So um, let's say that we had a research task and we need to find primary sources. Now primary sources can be really difficult, particularly if they're a long time ago. In this case I have students working on the Revolutionary Diaries project from the turn of the 19th century in Latin America and they do struggle with finding the two primary sources that the project demands. We're gonna do a little exercise here. We're at the home page, we're gonna go to the database page, you'll be prompted for the username and password, we're gonna go in, we're going to scroll down and we're going to look at actually a very underutilized resource, History in Context. And we'll be prompted again for uh, log on information. We're going to search for Chile and Independent because that'll bring up Independent and Independence. So we are going to star that and click search. And we have a number of choices. So we're going to click on Reference for now. And if we scroll through the list, we see we have a people by name. Ooh, this Bernardo O'Higgins seems to show up a lot. That's a curious item. Let's take a look at this entry on Bernardo O'Higgins. And we have, ooh, there's a nice little timeline. Ooh, look, in 1810, he joined the independence movement in Chile. So what's happening here is we are going to highlight and copy significant words that might bring us back to this time period when doing searches for primary sources. So you see Concepcion, O'Higgins, Lirque, that's a treaty, a city, a person. We're also going to highlight Andes and 1814 as a significant date. Uh, we have later on down the list, we go to San Martin and Mendoza and Carrera. All of those are great search terms to help us pinpoint newspaper articles, documents, letters, diaries, photographs from that time period. So let's grab this. We're gonna copy this and we're gonna open a Word document and we're gonna paste them, but we're gonna use paste special so that they're unformatted. We have a nice list of search terms. This is going to be the list that's really going to help us out once we get started looking for the nitty-gritty little primary Keywords source. Stuff. on the right, and we have our internet browser on the left, we're going to go back to the database page. We're going to scroll down for, in this case, we're going to look at the ProQuest Historical Hartford Current. So we are going to enter your K from 1800 to 1850. Nothing. So you think that's it. We're done, right? But no. Let's keep going down the list. O'Higgins might be a good search term. That looks promising. Looks like there are two that are going to be really good. So we're going to select those and we're going to refine our search. Now we're going to add Rancagua. Nothing. Now we're going to do Concepcion. Nothing. How about 1814 and Chile. So this is where you start to wonder, maybe I'm doing something wrong because you know something was going on in 1814 in Chile. So what could be the possibilities? The date might be wrong. What if Chile is wrong? Have you thought about that? Maybe they called Chile something else in 1814. There's a question to ponder. We'll go back to our results and we're going to scroll down and continue with our list. How about Andes? Hmm, that looks promising from South America. Let's take a peek at that from South America. Blah, blah, blah. Commander in Chief, Patriot Army, Peru, Lost Battle, Reinforce, Buenos Aires. Oh, look, they spell Aires different. How about that? Let's go to yeah, recapture Chile. How about that? Chile is spelled differently than the way we spelled it in our search. Now there's an interesting fact. Do you think that could have some impact? Let's go back to our results and let's scroll down and change this to Chile. Oh my God, we suddenly have 497 documents. Now we have to narrow our time frame. Chile and not classified and not article. 
All right, it still looks like we have some stuff we can do without. So let's come back down here. Let's get rid of the obituaries. And we'll narrow our time frame from 1810 to 1830. This is looking much more interesting. From South America, latest from South America, 1811. From South America, 1816. From South America, 1816. Do you notice a pattern? These are organized chronologically. How about if we change this from oldest to most relevant? Expedition against Lima, we'd already checked that one. Independence of South America, this is looking much better. We can change this so we can see more than 10 on a page. Is there anything else we should be looking at? Latest from South America again. I think that's probably sufficient because now we have three hi highlighted articles and we can look at our marked items. And there they are. And we have some very nice stories on the latest from South America, 1820, 1822, 1821, 1817. So let's take a look at that one. And we can read, though it's hard, this lovely primary source. Let's go back to our list. And we can look at the next one, which is from 1821, just four years later. As you can see, they're rather small. These are taken from 200-year-old newspapers. And you know that a newspaper doesn't hold up all that well. So clearly, the quality is um, sketchy. Um, what I would suggest is definitely blow them up to 400, because at least you can read them on a screen. Um, if there are parts that you find really, really interesting, you might want to do a screenshot of those and then paste them into a Word document and save those. Um, definitely email the document to yourself because it includes all of the citation information in the body of the email. Do not copy and paste links. Those ProQuest links will die the next time you open that document. You have to be logged in on that particular session in order to have a link work. Go to Cite This and change this to MLA. And know that there will be mistakes that you need to check them against your planner, pages 41 to 46. And then you can copy and paste it either into a Word document or into a Google Docs. And that's it.